how precise is the Nina polar alignment versus the sharp cap polar alignment? Today, we're going to find out. Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to my balcony. Today we're going to use my Big Bertha here, or my bazooka, whatever we want to call it, to um, test out the polar alignment. So I've recently set up this uh, mount and uh, telescope again, and the mount is absolutely not polar aligned. Um, I, I used it for some uh, solar viewing today and the sun was just drifting out of the field of view because I think like it's, it's not polar aligned basically. And we're going to use the follow following protocol to uh, check out the polar alignments. Uh, the first software I'm gonna use is I'm going to be using SharpCap. We're gonna use SharpCap with, we actually have a small guide scope behind the scope here that is a focal length of around 250 millimeters with the ASI 174mm camera. And we're gonna use that and SharpCap's uh, routine for polar, polar alignment. Uh, do it to do the polar alignment to the best of our ability. I'll be um, linking to a video above so you can see uh, how to do that yourselves if you're uh, not looking into it. But I will also show you the parameters that I have in the polar alignment settings for sharp cap and why I have that. Next step, we're going to use PHD2. The guiding assistant should tell us how much drift we have in declination. And drift of in declination is a symptom of poor polar alignment. So we'll be able to see over a certain time period of a, a few minutes, for instance, to see if we get the drift. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time with Nina. And in Nina, we're going to do the routine, but we're going to take advantage of Nina's reliance on ASTAP as a plate solver and so Nina will be able to work very easily with my main scope and my main imaging camera uh, so we'll be using uh, this 760 millimeters focal length Newtonian telescope along with my ASI uh, 1600 and, and cool camera. So in theory, Nina has the advantage because it's using a camera with better resolution so we should be slightly more precise. Uh, but let's see what we get. Again, I'll do my best to align my telescope and then we'll run PhD2. So let's get started. Okay, we are now in SharpCap and the first thing that I want to do is look at my SharpCap settings. So if I go to File, SharpCap Settings, uh, we have um, a tab that is quite important, which is Polar Alignment. And you have two important options in there. One is, do you want to correct for atmospheric refraction? because the lower the um, celestial pole, whether it's north or south, the closer it is to the horizon, the more atmosphere it has to go through. And there is um, refraction happening, just like when you look at a pole that you put in a swimming pool, the pole appears broken at an angle, it's basically the same thing happens. So the uh, star is actually not where the star actually is, if, if that makes any sense. What you're seeing and the actual star position are different. Uh, should we use the uh, atmospheric refraction correction for polar alignment? Uh, meaning, should we use the true position of the stars rather than the visual position of the stars? That is actually a subject of debate. And I've decided not to do so, so that we have something that should be very close between uh, Nina and Sharp Cap. Another thing that is quite important is those set in those settings. So I've left the atmospheric refraction correction to off. But one very important thing is whether we want to use the, uh, uh, the location estimated from our time zone, or we want to uh, get the location from the mount, or we want to use the location manually. So I could connect um, SharpCap to the mount using the hardware tab here. It's just basically an ask and chooser kind of thing, and that would absolutely work. I could uh, do this and just connect the hardware, uh, but I've decided to just put my um, coordinates manually here with my longitude and my latitude, um, and that's pretty much it. And with that, we should get pretty much, in theory, a very similar result between SharpCap and Nina. and we'll be able to test that result's precision. Okay, you can see me with my final polar alignment in SharpCap, kind of the best I could achieve with this mount uh, for now. 
Um, it's around one arc minute. It changes as I speak because uh, when I move, the mount moves. So take that into account in the me measurements. We're going to be limited by uh, my conditions, my roof balcony, my seeing, a lot of things. And when we're trying to achieve better than one arc minute, honestly, I don't think it's typically worth it, uh, at least in my conditions. Anyway, now that we've done this in SharpCap, I will open up PhD2 and we're going to do some guiding assistant. Okay, and I am now in PhD2 and uh, I have slewed the telescope to, um, out to an area that's not far from Altaria, which should give you, us a good idea of if we experience declination drift while guiding. I've selected a star that has a good signal to noise ratio of around 40 and it's not saturated either. So this is going to be good for both uh, guiding and for the uh, guide assistant. I'm going to first calibrate my mount, just force it to recalibrate just that so that we make sure that uh, PhD2 is properly controlling our mount. Okay, and I can see that now we are guiding, so I can go inside our tools and select guiding assistant here. And we, it will disable the guide output and allow the guide star to drift. So yes, let's do it. We'll need to wait for a few minutes. Okay, and I've let it run for a few minutes, uh, like maybe six or seven minutes. And normally that should be enough to show us a significant drift in declination. And um, uh, look at this graph. The, um, the blue one is the RA. So we see the, uh, the periodic error of my mount is, is beautiful. Uh, but more importantly, and it's not that bad actually, it's like plus minus eight arc minutes. Pretty good. For, uh, for a mount like this one. Um, I never measured it before, but that's uh, quite acceptable. But anyway, more important than that in our case is the red line. The red line is our declination and our declination refuses, absolutely refuses to drift away. It, it just stays put. And this is because we seem to have an excellent polar alignment. If we look at the guiding assistant, it tells us that our polar alignment error is 0.3 arc minutes, so even better than what I could have assumed based on what SharpCap was telling me. So this is excellent. SharpCap, excellent result. It does cost money on a, on a yearly basis, but wow. And yeah, we can see, I think we're getting into a second cycle of the worm gear here. Um, so yeah, really, really um, impressed by the result. Now, the next thing is Nina. Okay guys, so I have uh, good news and I have bad news. <laughs> the bad news is that the comparison between Nina and SharpCap is kind of um, no longer, I mean, it is a comparison, but basically I didn't have to touch the uh, polar alignment knobs at all. I didn't do anything since we did the SharpCap polar alignment and the polar line and the check with the PhD guiding assistant. And you can see that uh, Nina tells us uh, roughly one arc minute polar alignment error. Sometimes depending on whether I'm talking or not, it's uh, like it was like 40 arc, arc seconds at what moment it was 57 uh, right before this one. It was 59 arc seconds. And remember the values that we were getting in sharp cap, it was pretty much the same. So yeah, it seems that by having the atmospheric refraction checked off in uh, sharp cap and um, I don't know what else. Uh, we're basically agreeing exactly with SharpCap and Nina, which basically means that if you are using SharpCap for polar alignment and you're buying the premium license, the SharpCap Pro license, only for the polar alignment, you're not using the live stack features or anything like that, then it might be better not to buy the SharpCap Pro license and to just use the Nina polar alignment. Now, because this is leaving me a bit like embarrassed, like, okay, wait, wh what did I do wrong last time? I'm not going to try to make this one arc minute better than, than it is right now, because we saw the drift, uh, the, the guide assistant, it told me I had like excellent polar alignment. So I'm not going to change anything. But what I, I will try to do is um, we are going to start the polar alignment in Nina 
on a star that's completely not to the north. So we're going to start maybe around Altair and do the three-point polar alignment based on that. And then I'm going to see if we get a widely different result in Nina or if we get something that's consistent. So we're no longer comparing Nina and Sharpcap. If you have a view of Polaris, then you're going to get good results. The difference with what I did last time is uh, that I did not have atmospheric refraction on in sharp cap and I configured the position very correctly in sharp cap, um, which I thought I had done before, but it appears to have been based on time zone pr uh, prior to, to that in my previous test. So very good news. If you have, yes, yeah, so view of Polaris, sharp cap, Nina, to give the same result. So you don't need to pay for to for sharp sharp cap if you're using it you're using that license only for polar alignments i'll now try the three-point polar alignment on another star and i'll give you the result uh, by the way since the last time that i featured um, the uh, polar alignment tool in nina there's been a change that you can start from the current position um, and so I've set, I've, I've used manual focus targets to slew to, uh, towards Altair. It's not, the, the mount is not quite synced, so that's like not a big deal. Uh, but uh, now you can see I have the start from current position option in Nina. I am going to use that. I'm going to set that to on. I'm going to click play and we're going to see the result that we get. And here we are for, folks. Good news. We're getting the same result basically. So the Nina uh, three-point polar alignment, at least in the latest version of the, the plugin, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's not like we see 39 arc seconds right now, so it's not getting exactly the same figure as we had when I was using like towards Polaris, but we're seeing like the conclusion, the Nina polar alignment method seems to agree with sharp cap it seems to agree with PHD2 and PHD2 shows you the symptoms of poor pearl alignment. So if it agrees with PHD2, it means it's correct. And it seems to agree regardless of whether you use somewhere towards Polaris or faced away from Polaris or from the whatever you use for the celestial south pole in the southern hemisphere. So uh, maybe this changed a bit since the last version of uh, Nina. I don't know, but I find this absolutely amazing. And this is great. So yeah, my SharpCap Pro subscription is going away officially. Um, yeah, Nina is great. <laughs> Dare I, <laughs> need I say it a lot? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this video. So thank you so much for watching. Conclusion, use Nina. If you're not subscribed to the channel uh, and you like this kind of tips and tricks about astrophotography, please go down below, click that subscribe button, click that bell icon, leave a comment if you like. And more importantly than that, never forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.